Welcome to Primrose Organics, which is the food producing part of Primrose Earth Centre and is a flagship model of sustainable food production. My name is Paul Benham and here I am in the entrance to the garden, which was a bare field of grass together with a whole farm 27 years ago when I arrived and had very little biodiversity and minimal wildlife. Here I am again leading a group into the forest garden and now the whole farm is a rich haven for wildlife in addition to producing great abundance of excellent food. I began with the training in agri-industrial methods of food production but following disillusionment in this type of exploitative and unsustainable system I retrained in ecology which has helped to create this model of food production which is in a highly beneficial relationship with nature. This 1.5 acres, of which half an acre is forest garden, produces 24 to 25,000 pounds worth of produce per year and is without doubt the most productive piece of land in the UK. And we have lines of apple trees in between the annual beds, these amazing growths of sugar snap peas, uh, beautiful damsons, pears are plenty, and herbs. Here we have parsley. Not only is the farm incredibly productive, but the quality of the produce is exceptional. And here are the nine awards we won in two years at the True Taste of Wales Food and Drink Ceremony. And we achieved goals in the vegetable, fruit and healthy eating categories. And this year we won three more awards, including the gold in sustainable development category. And it is great to be recognised for our directive and total commitment to sustainability. The awards demonstrate the wonderful flavours of Primrose produce and this is appreciated by the 20 high-class local hotels and restaurants that we supply. Visitors are impressed by the appearance of vibrance and vitality of the growing crops and this indicates a very good life force energy component. Regular tests have shown a considerable reduction in minerals in general fruit and veg on sale over the last 60 years and this is likely to be a result of soil degradation. Also, vitamins can be lost very quickly. Many of Primrose crops reach customers within hours of harvesting, which maintains vitamins which can even be lost within 24 hours. The Primrose secret begins with really caring for the soil, which creates a living soil that grows living food, which gives life energy to the consumers. The soil has a wonderful crumb structure, allowing passages of gases, water and minerals. We build the fertility with organic matter garden and manure compost. And the humic colloids, which are negatively charged, hold on to the positively charged minerals that feed the plants. Mycorrhizal fungi are encouraged, which help to transport nutrients to the plants. We minimise nutrient loss from the soil, covering the soil during the winter with mainly green manure and through minimal cultivation techniques, not cultivating between the rows of crops. Also, we use a chrome tool that only works the top two to three inches of the soil. Primrose operates a four-course rotation in the outside garden with potatoes, followed by legumes, then salads, and then roots and onions. In the three tall tunnels, six crops are grown over three years. So in one winter, spinach and Japanese onions are followed in the summer by tomatoes, peppers, and aubergines. Then parsley, beetroot, and carrots next winter, followed by melons and cucumbers which in the summer are growing up above the lower crops. These are followed by oriental salads and then stringless beans in the following summer. These rotations help to reduce pests and diseases and the different soil requirements of the crops can be met from their place in the rotation. Mm -hmm. 
Primrose Organics is an ecological polyculture and a very wide diversity of crops are grown and this provides plenty of variety for customers when selling locally. The stall in hay may contain 30 to 40 different items in the summer. Interest is maintained with customers and hotels with new seasonal crops becoming available through the year. Hotels are now becoming more receptive to crop seasonality. The high biodiversity means that it is more resilient, a more resilient system and more able to withstand market fluctuations. Also it has inherent resilience and so will be better able to withstand the adverse effects of climate change which we are already beginning to experience. Highly industrialised crops with monocultures and GM, and particularly when controlled by large multinationals, are much more vulnerable to climate changes, and so the high biodiverse polycultures like Primrose offer a much more reliable way for obtaining future food security. The high productivity of Primrose is a very relevant model to the transition towns movement to produce food in and around cities where the availability of food is so dependent on fossil fuels. In the industrial food system, 50% of food is wasted post-harvest, whereas at Primrose we form a relationship with the plants that provides for the real needs of the plants and maximises their output and we also minimise the wastage post-harvest. In addition to the high biodiversity of cropping, we have also created an ecological food system that has encouraged nature to be in and around the productive garden. There are 70 different native herbs and plants around the seven ponds. Borage and poppies self-seed themselves amongst the productive plants, and borage is a favourite of bees, and we also put the flowers in salad packs. Nasturtiums under the fruit trees help to keep the codlin moth off the apple trees and we incorporate the flowers and leaves of these in salad packs. We grow smelly plants around like mince and tansy and these help to disorientate pests which locate their hosts through smell. The wild plants provide important foods and lodgings for beneficial wildlife. The native plants contain higher levels of energy and protein in their flowers than do cultivated plants, and predatory insects need these high energy foods. Here we see hoverflies that eat aphids. Slugs can be a major problem in Wales and our team of helpers include slow worms, frogs and toads, and birds which have increased phenomenally at Primrose with the Ray's natural environment. One year we had four nesting pairs of missile thrush in the forest gardens and when feeding their young in June they would come into the main garden and tunnels to collect slugs. Our army of ducks also reduces the slug population considerably. Our loving cat Puss is also a great predator, killing masses of rodents and up to a hundred young rabbits each year.
Primrose salads are in great demand since most salads that are available are relatively flavourless, but ours are made up of very interesting mixtures of around seven spicy flavours, interesting lettuces, sorrels, herbs and flowers, with about 16 or 17 different ingredients. We also supply large amounts of rocket, both rucola type and wild, to restaurants. Much salad is sown in individual sections in module seed trays and planted out. However, some are sown by seed distribution and the plants grow very compact together and can be harvested with scissors. We also use homemade mini tunnels for salad production in spring and autumn. Over the years at Primrose, I have come to respect the fact that not only is nature a great support to our growing system, but nature is also our teacher. The forest garden is a good example of this, since it mimics the natural woodland which is highly productive but looks after itself. For 15 years I have incorporated permaculture in order to create a sustainable operation. Design is the essence for creating forest gardens, and although they are ancient systems in the tropics, in temperate regions design is important to encourage light to the lower levels. There can be up to seven levels of production with tall canopy trees, shrubs, bushes, climbers, herbs and ground cover. Perennials are encouraged and minimal maintenance mulches the ground once per year. There is a transition of cropping throughout the year, with a pre-vernal wild garlic producing early and then autumn raspberries cropping in the same place later. In places we have encouraged carpets of wild strawberries as ground cover. We have a very low carbon footprint at Primrose and use minimal fossil fuel in production, with most work being done by people, and distribution is all within 18 miles. Old freezers, which are well insulated, make energy efficient propagators, heated only by small light bulbs. No other heat is used to produce all Primrose crops, and an inner skin in part of the greenhouse provides frost protection. Energy saving is further increased with solar hot water panels for both the farmhouse and the B&B area and a biomass log boiler provides energy efficient heat in the winter. We do earth building with the earth from Primrose land and the cob oven is good for making bread and pizzas. The large rear of the Volvo provides an excellent herb dryer, however we are in the process of building a solar dehydrator. In addition to a very low fossil fuel demand for producing food at Primrose, we have created a number of carbon sinks which will absorb carbon dioxide. The half an acre of mixed deciduous woodland was planted 18 years ago, and also the half an acre of forest garden, as well as being productive, acts as a carbon sink, as too is a considerable area of willow coppice. These are all very good for the local natural environment and wildlife, in addition to their beneficial effect on climate change. The green manure in the winter will absorb carbon dioxide and sequestration of organic matter into the soil will help to lock up carbon. <laughs> Primrose people are a vital part of the operation, since we have replaced machines with handwork. The very high biodiversity and the natural feeling and beauty of the garden, with great variety of jobs, creates the potential for people to gain some of the healing power that is offered by nature. This is a very different environment to work in, rather than large, little, diverse farms. We have three support workers who stay the season and help to organise and run the organic business and up to 50 people each year who come and help for a minimum of one week. This creates a very interesting multicultural mix of people who share ideas and skills and cooking techniques. Over the last 60 years there has been substantial government encouragement to increase output per person on farms and much financial support for mechanised systems. There are millions of people out of work and on antidepressants and tranquilizers who could gain inner benefits through becoming involved with producing food in this type of meaningful ecological system. I 
I run a How to Garden for Life course held on a dare month through the year and this covers the theory and practice for growing organic and sustainable food the Primrose Way. Each day covers activities and processes that are happening at that time of year. The guided tour provides inspiration and knowledge of seasonal changes. Most of the content of this day gardening course is also contained within the two-part residential course Gardening and Cooking for Life and a Sustainable Future. This course also includes wild foraging, interesting methods of preparing food and cooking to maintain flavours and nutritional value. This shows the differences in nutrients lost to the fluid during the boiling and steaming of Swiss chard. We host a very wide range of visitors and I give guided tours to groups that range from permaculture, friends of the earth and transition town groups, visits from the Hay on Wye Literary Festival, farmers, MSc students, WIs, two partially sighted and hard of hearing groups. Through the Primrose Earth Awareness Trust we hosted groups from 45 different schools in the area. We offered them 11 theme focus days of which five of these focused around growing food and caring for the natural environment. Many schools had their own piece of garden in which they would produce crops and take the harvest back to school to eat with their dinners. We also have had visits from three Welsh Assembly Ministers, Carwin Jones, and here is Carwin with Kirsty Williams AM, Ellen Jones and da Jane Davidson. In addition, we offer two-hour guided tours combined with a two-course seasonal meal, both to large groups like this delegation of representatives from Finland, but also to smaller groups of at least four people. These are offered from April until October each year. The quality and vitality of Primrose produce begins through nurturing the soil, but it is also greatly supported with our positive intentions. At Primrose, we produce food within the flow of giving and receiving, and we believe in the interconnectedness of all life, and we try to encourage working with mindfulness and gratitude. We also hold seasonal celebrations, using sound to connect with the energy of the season, and honour and offer respect and gratitude to the land and plants. These celebrations also encourage participants to live and organise their lives within the annual energy cycle of nature. We are beginning to experiment using biodynamic potions which activate plants and the earth on an energetic level. I am also beginning to experiment using sound to offer positive vibrations to the plants and the garden. The C to F sharp interval is particularly enjoyed by the plant kingdom and the earth gong is offering positive vibration to the garden, plants and wildlife. My journey at Primrose began with a bare field, a knowledge of what not to do and an exploration of how to produce food in a good way. As the years circled by, I became more able to open my heart and soul to nature and the energy of the land. This has been personally very healing and become such a blessing and an unfolding of the healing way for food security.